Okay, today I'm gonna to do my best to show you how to set up a tarp in a hammock uh, down in dirty style because I didn't bring a tripod with me to hold my camera. So let's just talk about supplies real quick. So I got two tree straps, that's for my hammock, and I just carry my stuff in a haversack, okay? Um, I have a quick deploy paracord ridge line. I'll show you how to do that. I have about six tent stakes. You don't always need all of them, but I like to have six in case one bends or something like that. Uh, little number 36 bank line. A roll of duct tape that's for repair work that's all it's for so if you get a hole in your tarp or something like that you can repair it and a hammock whatever hammock you want and then you have your tarp that's your rain fly okay you want to make sure your tarp is big enough to stretch the length of your hammock now this tarp is nine and a half by nine and a half feet so it should be plenty big and i hang it on what's called a diamond configuration i get the corners up on the ridge line so the first thing I'm gonna do is set up the hammock and then I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Um, now, if it's pouring down the rain, you wanna set up your tarp first, okay? But in this situation, I'm gonna set up the hammock first. First, you're gonna set up your two tree straps. Now, mine's here, and then if I pan around, the other one's gonna go right about there or maybe even on that tree right there. I want it directly across from one another. So most tree straps are made like this. There's a loop on one end, and then there's an end with a bunch of loops on it, okay? These loops is where you put your carabiner for your hammock, so you can adjust it to any section. This one, you just run your whole line through that and get it around the tree. I like to set my hammock at about chest height. Now, I'm 190 pounds, so mine will stretch a bit. Chest height, I say, because uh, you only want to set your hammock up as high as you're willing to fall to the ground. In case something goes wrong in the middle of the night while you're sleeping, that thing falls, you don't want to break any bones or anything. The other thing is, make sure your area under your hammock is clear. So you're not gonna fall on anything or step on anything in the middle of the night. So set this one up and then go to your other tree and set your other hammock strap up. And then we'll hook the hammock on. All right, so I'm in my hammock here. And what I'm gonna show you is, is I am able to sit in this hammock with my knees bent like I'm sitting in a chair. So when I first set it up, my hammock's fairly tight and all the way across. And I have this one in particular set just at my waist level okay so i set it up waist height this time and the reason is because it's colder out now and i want it lower to the ground so i can get a bunch of leaves underneath all piled up and that'll cut all that wind that comes up under me if you don't have an underquilt or something like that so it really helps me get lower to the ground but so i'm not suffering from convection which is all that wind blowing around underneath me i could pile up leaves really high underneath this Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my tarp up and my tarp ridge line is gonna go about a foot and a half to two feet above my hammock line. I don't want it right in my face. Now, if you're getting inclement weather where it's gonna be pouring down the rain and things like that, uh, set it lower and then you're gonna be in your hammock and your tarp's gonna be like right above you, okay? So think about the weather when you're setting this stuff up. If I want a lot of airflow, I wanna be able to stand up underneath my tarp um, just sit on my hammock and chill and be able to see everything around me. Then I'm going to set my rain fly up higher, my tarp up higher. If there's going to be pouring down rain or a bunch of snow, I'm going to set it down low and I'm probably going to do like an, a really tight configuration. So I have to duck down under there, sit in my hammock and lay down. Okay. But one thing I, I will tell you, sorry about the camera <laughs> job. Um, if one side of your tarp is higher than the other, you can adjust it down. Um, or lay your head on that end where the, that side's higher. That way, when you wake up, you won't have a headache. Your head won't be downhill, all right? And that's something you want to consider as well. But if you look at this, my tarp is roughly about, I'll say, three feet off the ground right now. If I fell three feet, I'm not going to break any bones. I might knock the wind out of myself a little bit, but I'm not going to break any bones or anything. And there's no rocks or sticks underneath my tarp. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set up the ridge line. I'm gonna talk about each part of that ridge line before we get the tarp onto it. Okay, this next part should be interesting because I have to try to tie a loop with one hand, but <laughs> let's start here. Okay, on one end of my ridge line, I have a bowline knot. And what I do is I take the bowline, I go around the tree and the bowline's on one end, then I take part of my main ridge line and I push it a bite through the bowline and I put a stake through that bite. Now you can look up online, even my other videos, how to set up a hammock, that kind of thing. 
um, figure out how to tie a bowline and you just take a bite in your line, stick it through that loop through the bowline and stick your tent stake in there and that holds it in place. Then I go all the way down to the other end. You can use a trucker's hitch, whatever you want. If it's I'm working with scouts, I do a ratcheting hitch. So what I do is I come down here, I wrap the line around the tree, I come up over the line, pull it tight, go back around the tree and just tie a slip knot right off the line. Now what you could do if you're afraid this is gonna come undone, cause see, it's made so we could just pull it off real quick and it'll come undone. Pull it down and put a toggle, a piece of wood or a tent stake in there and pull it tight and it won't come undone, okay? I just leave it here. Then I hank up the rest of my line and stick it in my tree strap so it's out of the way. So now I have this nice rigid ridge line. On this ridge line, I have it already on my ridge lines or what are called prussic loops. What they are is they slide back and forth when you're pulling on them like this, but once you put tension on them, they won't move, okay? And that's what we want for our tarp. The trick to this is you have to use a smaller piece of cord for this and a larger diameter cord for this, and that's what makes that system work. And the way it starts is, this is the interesting part, starts with a loop. So just tie yourself a loop. Mine's about as big as my fingers will fit into. And then all you're gonna do is loop it around like this, around itself three times. And once you have that, pull it tight, and you just want to slide these ends together, make sure they're, whoops, make sure they're all dressed up. Slide them together until it looks like a fist. See that? Oh, there we go. It kind of looks like a fist, okay? And that's our prussic loop. And we can move it back and forth on the line to adjust our tarp. But when we go to yank on it, it won't, it won't go anywhere. Now this one's not tied very tight because I just did it for demonstration. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my tarp up on here, but I'm not gonna do it like it's a tent, okay? I'm not gonna put like even on each side. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a corner, throw it over the line, and I'm gonna have a corner on this side, which means I'll have a corner up here on the line and a corner on the other side on the line in a diamond configuration. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this prussic loop, we're gonna run it through the loop or the grommet on our tarp, and we're gonna put a stake in this after it's through the loop, and we're gonna pull these down tight, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, let's take a look at the, the way this tarp's configured right now. I don't have the end staked out. I have a corner up there, a corner up there, so you should have something that looks like a triangle right now. But what you wanna notice is each corner goes past my actual hammock, right? Not past the tree, not up to the tree, but just pat, past the hammock. On each end, the corner goes past the hammock because I want to be sheltered from the weather, okay? The other thing you'll notice is my hammock straps right at the hammock, and unless you do hammock camp and you don't realize this, are hanging down. The reason is, is because when it rains, this is not covered by a tarp. Water will travel down here, and instead of going into my hammock, it'll flow down this strap, so I won't get water in my hammock. And I have that on each side like that. Now, the way I do this is, I take that prussic loop we talked about, I run it through the loop on my tarp, and then I run this stake through that piece of cordage from the prussic loop that came through my tarp. And that keeps it snug, okay? And you can use a stick, but I just carry tent stakes with me, so I always have what I need. If it's raining, I don't have to sit there cutting up sticks. Same thing on the other side. And the way this works is it's a tensioning. See, I loosen it up like that, now the tarp's loose. All I have to do is take it like this, give it a good pull, tighten it up like that. Then I'll go to the other side. I want to make sure it's right above the corners out from the edge of my hammock. Go to the other side and give it a nice little tug. Now it's easier when you have two hands because you want to hold on to this part of the cord when you're tightening up this prussic loop. Okay, but you just slide it. Once it's got tension on it, it's not going to go anywhere. So I can yank on this like like this, I'm holding onto the tarp. It's not going anywhere, okay? What's nice about this, if my tarp loosens up because of wind or whatever, I can pull it snugger, okay? Now what we're gonna do is, and this is what you use your extra cordage for, um, or you could just use the stakes. Now I can decide to take this corner. Notice my tarp has loops on it and a grommet. I never use grommets, they tend to rip, and I don't use tarps that have grommets right on the tarp because they tend to rip. 
I always use something with tie out loops. My tarp happens to have tie out loops in the center here. If I wanted to string it up to a tree to pull it up higher, it's got it on each corner. It's got one in the middle. You can even get an AquaQuest Defender tarp if you want to spend $100 on a tarp. This one was about $35. Um, but anyway, I have this loop. I'm going to pull that out with a piece of cordage, and I'm either going to tie it to a rock, a tree, or another tent stake. So when I carry that little roll of bank line, I use number 36 Tard Mariner's bank line. You pick some up at Walmart. I get it on Amazon. I'm going to spool that. And you can use that. Just recover all your cordage when you're done, okay? So I'm going to tie out these other corners so you can see what the complete setup looks like, all right? Now, if I'm concerned about a lot of rain, I'm going to tie this thing down to the ground, nice and tight, like this. I'm not going to be able to see a view or anything when I'm like this in my hammock. This is just to keep all the weather and the wind off of me. If I want a view and it's summertime, I'm going to lift this corner up and I'm going to tie one corner as high as I possibly can. And I'm typically going to stake the other one down to the ground really tight. And that allowed me to just sit in my hammock like a camp chair and I can have a campfire right outside my hammock. Okay, so let me do that and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so for this first side, I just pulled it snug. I tied a bow in in the end of my bank line and ran it through the loop on the toggle and then just ran the stake through that loop, okay? Then I came over to this little shrub here and all I did was I wrapped around the Y of this shrub. I tied two half hitches like we do in the scouts and then I just hanked up my extra cordage and laid it in the fork so it's out of the way and I don't trip on it or anything. Um, keep in mind, I use an orange ridge line and bright orange tent stakes. That way when people are walking through in the night, they can see them. Because obviously this bank line is very difficult to see at night. Now we're gonna do the other side and I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you stake it to the ground. All right, so let's talk about this side of the tarp a little bit. It's a little bit different. So what I did was I tied a bow in in the end of this bank line. I ran it through here and then I ran the rest of the bank line back through the bow in to make kind of a slip knot. Something that's easy to get undone. Then I came down here with my line. I went around my tent stake. Notice my tent stakes pointed at about a 35 degree angle away from my tarp, okay? Because I'm gonna put tension on this. I went around it, I came back up, and I tied a taut line hitch right here. That allows me to grab one side of the line and grab this taut line hitch and pull this way with the taut line hitch and down on this line to tighten up my tarp so I can use it as a tensioning knot. So that becomes loose during the wind, I just have to grab this and tension it up. Now this is a scout knot, taut line hitch, the bowline. Over on that shrub where I tied off, I used two half hitches, right? I'm using prusik loops. I'm using a bowline over here and I'm using a ratcheting loop around the tree with a bite and a slip knot here, right? So all of these things keep this ridge line tarp system taut all right and that's what we want because we want to be able to shed rain now me i'll go around and adjust this thing until this thing is as tight as i can get it because i don't want any rain pulling on my tarp see how loose that is but when i'm holding a camera it's hard to do so i get it really really tight but the best part of this is this back part happens to be in the direction the wind blows it blows right in this direction in this valley okay so knowing which way the wind's blowing is important all right the other thing is on the other side of my hammock right about oh two paces away because i have a nylon tarp i don't want to catch it on fire right here i'm going to build my fire right here my fire lay is going to be right here i'll get the warmth of the fire but the wind is blowing away from my hammock which means it's blowing the smoke away from me as well okay so i could sit out here do my camp tasks have my fire do some cooking and things and i can also come back here and all you do is fold your hammock down get your butt in there have a seat and now you're swinging just lay back and relax and watch your fire okay not to mention i have some other logs on the other side whether I'm using those for firewood or whether I'm using them for benches for my camp, my crew to sit on, I got everything set up. And there's plenty of room all around me for people to set up other tents and everything so we can have plenty of room to enjoy nature together. Now, if it starts getting too windy or too stormy on me, I could take that line 
guy line right there, get it off that shrub, bring it down to the ground and bring the corner of the tarp right maybe two feet away from my hammock right here. I can do the same thing in the back. That'll give me more of a tent configuration. But if you step back and look at the whole setup, I now have a perfectly weatherproof system that I can enjoy hammock camping in. And if it's winter time or the fall or early spring, I can put an under quilt, a zero degree under quilt on my hammock. Inside, I'd use a climate hammock insul um, um, inf inflatable pad, right? They make them for hammocks so they don't slide around. They're kind of expensive. They're about 75 bucks a piece, but man, does it make it comfy. And that gives me a layer of protection from the weather to the bottom, like the bottom of the hammock, the weather and me. Okay, then I put my sleeping bag in there. I like to sleep with wool blankets even more. Um, you can do customize this any way you want, but that's your hammock set up with the Rainfly diamond configuration. Another way to do this is, well, put this tarp on here to where there's two corners hanging down on each side, on two on this side of the hammock and two on the other side. So it's an A-frame configuration and looks just like a tent. Bring your ridge line down lower, give yourself about two feet above your tarp of head space or above your hammock of head space. Now you have a tent configuration. Once again, make sure the sides, at least one of the sides are in the direction the wind is blowing. That way you don't have the wind blowing straight down your hammock and keeping you cold all night and bringing the rain in, okay? But you'll notice this tarp comes right over about a foot past, almost two feet past my hammock. So this is a nine and a half foot by nine and a half foot square tarp. I like using square tarps. The hammock's a very cheap hammock. That is an Anner Trek. And I think they're only about 25, 30 bucks or something like that. The tarp, I don't know if it has a name on it. I know the bag did, uh, but I'm looking basically for a nylon tarp that has these kind of loops on it. I don't want grommets on the tarp. I want these kind of loops. As you do this more often and you decide you want to invest more in it, you can get pretty pricey with this stuff, okay? So the next thing I would want to do here is bring that corner up further and tighten it down really good. Same with this side, make sure it's really tight on that ridge line. Then I'm going to tighten up this corner and I'm going to get rid of that scoop in the middle so I'm not holding any water. But I'll tell you this, I've seen plenty of scouts going on hikes like we did over the past weekend and they ran out of water. Well, if you know it's going to rain, make a toggle and a loop, hang it right here, hang your water bottle right here, right off this, and the water will run from the tarp right into your water bottle. If you're worried about germs or anything like that from your tarp, things that fall on your tarp are coming off the trees, boil that water and you have fresh drinking water. So you can use your tarp as a rain, rain catchment system. What's really nice about this is if I wasn't video recording, it takes maybe 10 minutes to set it up and it's even quicker to tear it down. Just make sure when you tear it down, you take the time to fold up your stuff the way it was and pack it back in the way it was. Typically, on top of my regular rucksack, my tarp is first and there's a the ridge line and my stakes are on top of that tarp. So when I go to pull it out, I can set my shelter up. Then's my hammock and my tree straps. I grab my tree straps, put them on, take my hammock, hook it on each side, pull it out of its stuff sack, and I'm ready to roll. Now I have my whole shelter sitting up. I could be on a day hike, it starts pouring down the rain, and within 10 minutes, I got a five to 10 minutes, I have a shelter set up and ready to go. So if you know you're going to be doing this, I already have these guy lines bundled up and ready to go. Already have your stakes ready to go. Have your prusik loop already on your ridge line. This is something I teach in my classes. Have all this stuff already prepped so you just pull it out of your bag, set it up in five minutes and you're good to go. You're enjoying nice sound of rain and nature while all your friends are getting soaking wet trying to struggle with their tents and their ponchos and all that fun jazz. But this is a perfectly good shelter camp out for quite a few days and you can snug this tarp up anytime you want to and change the configuration anytime you want to. Now if I really wanted to snug up this tarp I'd run a line from that loop in the middle up to one of these branches back down and pull that thing tight and get that that roof up but since it's been raining and stuff like that I really want these sides lower and the rain will shed off pretty good like that. If I see it's pulling I'll just reach up in and give it a tap and it comes off but I'm not going to get wet under here. So, 
So a friend of mine asked me to record this video. I've done hammock videos before and tarp videos and things like that. Um, but I'm thinking with the scout in mind, uh, there's some, some different kinds of lashes you do with tarp hanging and stuff like that that get really complicated. We want easy to deploy, really quick. Something you could practice in your backyard or your backwoods. Get together with your troop or your Cub Scout pack. Take your tarps and your hammocks. Go out on a day hike in the woods. Take a small picnic with you a cook stove, uh, some hot cocoa, and set up your tarps in your hammocks, tear them down, set them back up, tear them down, keep doing it until you can't do it wrong. And you'll, you'll just realize through muscle memory when you're out on the trail, you'll be doing this like it's nothing. You won't worry about rain or inclement weather. You won't worry, where am I gonna sit? Well, I got my hammock, I don't need to sit. I, I'm right here, I can eat my lunch sitting right here. And when I'm done, I'm just gonna lay down and go to sleep. So I'll see you next time.